Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a movie called Ghost of Mars. So as I'm looking at my copy of Ghost of Mars, drinking a cup of coffee, I realized I never did a podcast on it. And this is one of my favorite go-to movies, fun action romp. This is directed by John Carpenter, one of my favorite directors ever. It was made in 2001. It stars Natasha Henshridge, <laughs> Ice Cube, Jason Statham, Pam Greer, and a bunch of other people whose names I will destroy. Now, this is the ultimate reason why I think people love Expendables or action movies that, you know, aren't very good in a critical sense, but just capture your, uh, you know, your imagination. And this was one of them. I did not expect much. I remember when I first heard of this movie, um, I was already a big fan. It's 2001. I've been a big fan since I was a kid. But I always thought he was underrated in certain aspects. And I thought he knocked it out of the park with this movie. I can't believe how bad it performed at the box office and it became a cult following type movie and i love this movie i watch it religiously how can you not love ice cube jason statham and it's just natasha hentridge's favorite movie of my like her best movie although species was it species i think she did or something like that and she's been known for some b movie stuff this movie knocks it out of the park for me it's about colonizing mars it's the future like the 22nd century and it's like almost terraformed but they gotta wear a little mask and there's societies and uh, uh manufacturing companies and so on and so forth and there's a uh i guess police officers that are sent to get a prisoner and transport him and the prisoner is ice cube now normally i don't do a lot of plot reveals and uh you know all that stuff but there's a time stamp on some of these things this is very old but it's got a um nostalgia for me already and 2001 doesn't even seem that long ago when you're 50 but i can imagine for younger people so the concept is pretty simple you're colonizing mars you're terraforming it you've got workers there doing things and you send it on this group of police officers, quote unquote, that are going to get a, a prisoner and escort them to wherever. And everything goes wrong. It just becomes a fucking. This is so much good gore and blood done in a good way, not. um. Well, you know, I guess, yeah, everybody said, what's good for you, whatever. But I'm just trying to get the extremes between a um you know blood fountain squirting everywhere and just the stuff that makes you cringe and this has got balls and i think it's a good blend the music is phenomenal in my opinion all the music cues that start up action sequences just oh for me it's like the movie was made for me and they go to get this prisoner and it is pandemonium as these miners unlock some civilization release um i guess spirits or ghost of um i guess people who inhabited mars and if it, they when looked at as, as their own thing as they take over people they uh destructive self-mutilation um it just becomes a holy shit we have to get out of here alive type movie and when you kill one, it can get released, this inner spirit, and possess you. And that's one of the little plot twists that kind of happens in the movie. But when I'm watching this movie, I am carried from the beginning to the end. And these 96 minutes, or whatever you call it, or however it is, is thrilling for me. And it's just like that. Like, I do admit, like I like Green Lantern, but it's not a really good movie. I actually think this is a good movie. It just misses the mark for um, traditional critics, I guess. And I think that maybe that's why I like it more in the sense that I'm a John Carpenter fan. I've watched his 
uh, trilogy of um, destruction. You know, he has three movies that are loosely tied to a theme. I know a lot about the music he does. It's just on point for me. This movie is one of my favorites. I think the fucking movie, your budget was like $28 million. It made 14 I mean, you can't go much more wrong. But over the years, like a lot of people whose work is undervalued or not appreciated at the time and he has been appreciated at, you know he's had his moments there's no doubt i think this is one of the best movies he's made it's got so much going for it for me and there's not a lot of time to relax and i think it does it well too many movies are trying to make it a you know a train ride a big roller coaster ride and you got to balance those dips and bends and the slow going up and then the, the quick dive down. I love it. I think this movie does it all. When you got these actors and actresses hamming it up on screen and doing it fun. There's one, uh, uh, I watched the, uh, you know, when you listen to the director's commentary, at the end of the movie, N- Natasha Hentridge, like cocks her shotgun and looks at the camera and gives it a nod. And it fucking, it works. This whole movie, worked. who would have thought Ice Cube? At, and remember, this is 2001. Pam Greer is at the end of her career. She's like a minor character. Um, Joanne Cassidy's like a, you know, has a name. And she's like, these are people you're not going to really know. But you do know Jason Statham, who's become such a big action star. But back then, he's a side character. The main two characters are Natasha Henstridge and Ice Cube. And Natasha Henstridge has never really gone on to superstardom although she's beautiful and does some i like some of the movies she's done it's not super mainstream john carpenter again does the music i mean you got these uh police officers going to get the prisoner the miners open up to get possessed it starts a chain reaction people in town are like kind of dazed confused for a little while and all of a sudden they're self-mutilating going crazy they've got this prisoner and they've got other prisoners now who they have to gather and get to the train get the train out get to a ship the whole thing or the base they have to get to this is a nightmare scenario people get wiped out in some interesting ways there's a pace to it that is on par with the music that is hard to describe because you know it's done in a a cheesy way but it gets me it's just like when you're watching the uh rambo 2 or even 3 for that matter let's not even talk about the other ones but there are movies that are gained popularity that are way worse than this movie and all the missing in action chuck norris movies i mean I know the themes are different with this is possessed, but this movie just failed to hit its mark. And when you look at it as something that I watch a couple times a year, maybe more, never am I uh, turning it off and I'm looking for it. It's always at the, you know, stack of my hundreds of DVDs and I grab it. It's just uh, like, again, I said, it was so surprising to me that I didn't do a podcast on it when this is prime material for it. It's a movie a lot of people probably don't even know about. It's John Carpenter, one of my favorite directors. And he might not be up there with the Steven Spielbergs of the world, but for me, he fits that niche. He just does things I like. And, you know, hey, this is a convergence of interests and things that happen. We all have that type of uh, affect where we have a thing we love, but we know it's not mainstream. We know it's not going to be something that people are going to be into. But I recommend this movie. It is fun from beginning to end. It doesn't take itself seriously, but everything on the camera is done so well. I I could see people really cringing at the music cues and stuff, but I loved it. This is a weird movie for me. It's got such a love from me, uh, a special place in my heart. And we're not even talking about Halloween or uh, Big Trouble in Little China. I mean, some of the more notable works from uh, John Carpenter. This is just, no one knows about this movie. I don't know many people. And people who I watch show it to really enjoy it. Now, I'm not saying they're going to go and write a critically acclaimed uh, review on it. I don't think that's going to happen. But this is 
fun. A little bit of gore, a little bit of horror interlaced in it because there are scenes that really get people is uh done on purpose and besides the uh you know some movies that have the enormous fountains of blood what was it like kill bill did that right you know this is more terrifying in the sense that if you kill one of them you got a chance that it's going to invade you and they got this cool camera angle where it kind of follows the disembodied spirit or whatever the fuck it is essence and as it travels and it almost gets into somebody but they don't really even know it to a point and they just get a little confused and you're like oh fuck and there's a real cool thing they do in the movie which we know that drugs are, are good well i think drugs are a good thing for the most part um and they use it well i i, I don't know this is going to be a movie that i do understand is not going to be you know, worldwide uh, appeal. It's going to, you know, get a certain niche of people, but I think it's the same people who will go out and watch Expendables 1, 2, and 3. They'll watch the Fast and the Furious, which I don't like the whole series, but I get why people do like it. And, you know, you make a good movie, which I think it is, and you're going to find a little niche. You're going to find people who like it, just like music with bands. But with movies it's so hard you got so many moving parts it's one thing for me and my friend to go into a room and write a song together uh even if we're both guitarists and we have um enough equipment to do all the other stuff ourselves all right so uh, he'll lay down the drums i'll do the bass line and fine when you got a movie you've got so many moving parts it's just it's unfathomable sometimes. And I helped a friend do a short film. I did a little voice work on it. Just just imagine all the inner workings that have to come together for a movie to get put on the screen. So, even the indie movies that suck and I roll my eyes at, I do try to see some benefit in it. And hey, this is someone's dream. If I want to write a fucking, which I did, I write a book and someone makes a movie about it, it's going to be about pot smoking monk and his drunken monk half brother going up against the other addiction masters and a kung fu meets lord of the rings mashup it's like i don't think anybody's gonna love it's not gonna be like a but it's what i love it's a vision that i had and it gets put on film i would go nuts this is a man in 2001 has all his acclaim he has made some duds here and there that just weren't um you know, up to par with his stuff, and all directors do it, it happens, I thought this was a major comeback for me, I'm like, he's back, this is it, and the movie went fucking nowhere, it's just, you know, one of those things, but I can't say enough about Ghost of Mars, a 2001 science fiction horror action movie directed by John Carpenter, I think everybody will have, if you just like that already, and the premise is 22nd century, a group of officers go to Mars to get um, uh, a, a prisoner or uh, someone they, they arrested. They got to go to the jail and you kind of get the uh, well laid out function of Mars. You have to wear little rib breathers at times and so it's still not fully trans uh, terraformed. And then this life that would be out there. In, on another planet that we're, um, you know, colonizing or whatever. And then all of a sudden, boom, they hit something they're not supposed to. They, they find an archaeological dig, they hit the symbols, and now this, the spirits of the ghosts of Mars have come. And it becomes mayhem. And it's awesome mayhem, awesome music, everything about this movie I love. The hamming it up. The cheesiness, the, the the interactions between the characters, even the side characters. This I gotta give one thing away. This guy, one of the prisoners is trying to impress this lady, and he's what they're doing is they have these detonators, but the detonators don't do much on their own unless they're stuck into that like C4 or a little dynamite, whatever. And they say, look, these things have a good bang, but they need pressure or something. So 
they take canned, I think it's dog food. So they cut the they cut the can of dog food up and stuff the detonator in there. And boom, it gives it the pressure it needs so the can will explode, blah, blah, blah. This one guy is in trying to impress this woman. He's got a fucking machete and he's slicing the type of the cans off. And they show these like rebreathers they use that they substitute with drugs. And he takes his fucking meth drug inhaler thing. And he whacks the can and cuts his thumb off. And it is fucking, it's hilarious, scary, fucking foreboding. It just gets me on all all the levels. And I love this movie from top to bottom. The fucking silliness of it. Ice Cube running around with fucking Uzis and machine guns. And oh, it's just, and this, I, when you know how to film in the right way and get the most you can out of some fucking set and a and a play train that won't go more than eight feet at a time and you know you there's a charm to this movie that is adorable adorable to me i was gonna say adorbs but uh, <laughs> it's uh, something i say for certain people anyway ghost of mars go watch this movie i thoroughly recommend it i love this movie on so many levels it never stops being entertaining to me the characters the action i don't know how many times i've watched this movie it's got to be one of my favorites i can't even kind of roll it in my head what other all right jaws i watch a lot first matrix lord of the rings but you know a lot of things that you watch, well, especially today, well, we're just getting out of this pandemic thing, but one of the best trilogies ever, let's say Lord of the Rings, you, know, you might not consider it part of your routine because it's so long. This is 96 minutes of awesomeness. Uh, you know, you can't lose. And I just cannot get enough of this movie it's got to be one of the most watched movies ever from me you know it's that movie like halloween comes i put on halloween so that i watch a lot i never shut it off if it's on it's got that thing that i love it's simple music the cues this movie you got an hour and a half of just fun awesomeness and again I, i it's like how does expendables become popular expendables movies are terrible in a way i would consider this way better but plot the story the way the things come together just you like roll your eyes but action junkies love it i love i like the first expendables the other ones eh, not so much but seeing my stars on there getting their one line is meeting action stars together and making an event out of it i thought it was enjoyable but i'm not going to give it a critical acclaim this i might want to do both i think it's a undervalued movie people should know about it and watch it if you're into that thing obviously you've got mutilation self-mutilation and sci-fi horror type genre i just love the atmosphere the hamminess the and when i say hamminess don't get me wrong it's not what you think ham it's not space balls or a goofiness there's a natural chemistry between the characters that i think the director pushed and in a good way not a ghostbusters 2016 fucking way which had so many opportunities to wow me and just fell short with this fucking whole movie of improvisation whatever ghost of mars what are you waiting for one of my favorite movies ever watch this movie i don't even know if there's a movie i watched more i'm actually oh you know what Now that I think about it, maybe my Shaw Brothers Kung Fu movies I've watched more. Avenging Eagles, Kid with the Golden Arm, The Five Deadly Venoms. They are my action go-to rather than like Expendables or the Rambo movies. Although the first Rambo, First Blood. Holy shit. I just love that movie. Anyway, I am rambling now. This is Ghost of Mars. John Carpenter, 2001. Actors, you know, Natasha Henstridge, Ice Cube, Jason Statham. And by the way, like I said, they are side characters. The main characters are Natasha Henstridge, who was famous for Species, I think. 
and was becoming a big sci-fi horror fan, uh, star. And what she did, I think uh, her daughter does stuff. Ice Cube. I mean, what do you got to say, right? Ice Cube. Who would have fucking thought? And Jason Statham. Fucking ready to be a star. Exuding his, uh, you know, his own macho action hero type thing. And it's just the beginning here. I fucking love it. Go watch it. Poor movie only made fourteen million at the box office, man. I mean, come on, this is John Carpenter. He deserves it. Anyway, my best to you and yours. Hope everybody's doing well. We're getting back to normal, hopefully. Hope everybody has a wonderful summer. And I'll talk to you all next time. Take care.